All right, so as I mentioned, my name is Michael Fredericks, and I'm joined by William Cosgrove. That's our website. If you have any questions, that's how you can contact us. Okay, so as I mentioned, why and what would you want to automate? Basically, why is if you want to schedule tasks after working hours, also to reduce the human error in LCM exports. Some of the things you can automate to do are, for example, you can copy your outlines, rules, your cap scripts, and S base. If you want to use the utility.bat to LCM exports, such as HFM metadata, forms, grids, your planning forms, shared services security. Another thing we're going to talk about is how to use uh, PowerShell to send email alerts. One of the things end users or the admins like to know is after the task is done, such as a level zero export, get a notification that the task has been, com been completed. That way, if the task has not been completed, it allows you to go back and research what may have happened. The other big reason why you want to automate is consistency. That way, this task is done on a constant basis, whether a user is there is or the, whether the user is there or not. For example, again, if you do an S-based level zero exports on a nightly basis, if you want to go on vacation, you know that task is still going to be done. Uh, next slide, please. Some of the best practices. Anytime I do this for a client, and I always recommend create a dated folder to put the files in. That way you have a restore point for disaster recovery. This allows for a quick backup and restore method. Again, for example, if you're about to modify an S-based Calc script, you could take an LCM export of these scripts. That way, if you make a mistake or as you're running the script, it doesn't run correctly or there's an error, you can just do a quick LCM import to restore it prior to these changes. I like to use batch files with Xcopy to kind of copy certain files, for example, your Calc script files, your outline, or other needed files. Again, this allows you to be able to restore from a point in time, such as your data, your outline, your forms, and your rules. And the bottom point is probably, a, for me, the, the biggest takeaway from this. You don't always have to rely on IT for a backup. You know, for example, if something happens with your HFM application, you accidentally delete users from shared services, if you have an LCM export, you can just go in, restore the security. You don't have to go find IT, if they're backing it up to tape, wait for them to find the tape and spend those hours waiting for it to be restored. The other thing I like to do is integrate it with NT Scheduler. These are on each of the servers. And what you can do is you can actually schedule the date and time and the task to run. So what I like to do, as I mentioned in my opening statement, is use batch, file, use batch files to run with Scheduler. That way I can set the date, the time, and the frequency and also use this PowerShell command to send an email upon that task completion. So in my pictures there, that's an example of what NT scheduler looks like. For example, on this, the second picture where you have that triggers tab, that's where you can set your date, time, how often you want the task to run. And then the actions there, basically you just start a program, you browse out to that batch file that you created. Okay, next slide, please. The most common utility that I like to use to automate is the utility.bat. So what is the utility.bat? This is a batch file that can be used to help automate LCM exports. Whenever you do an installation of Hyperion, it actually installs this batch file. It's located in the following location, you know, your C or D drive or wherever you install Hyperion to, and it's on the server where you install and configure foundation servers foundation services. So it's usually your foundation server. So what this utility.bat file is, it's a batch file that points to your so-called export XML file that it's created. So the first time you run LCM, you'll go into shared services, you'll drill down. And in my second picture there, for example, with SBase, you'll choose your application and you can choose whatever selected artifacts you want to export. Okay. It's going to create that export.xml file the first time. Okay, next slide, please. So after the manual export is run, it will export that file to the import export folder. Okay, my example here, I just had one test server that I had everything on. 
but it is recommended that the import export folder be on a shared location using UNC. This is set up during your initial configuration of Hyperion when you're configuring foundation services. So for example, if you take an LCM export of uh, SBase, it's gonna create your export.xml file. If you want, you can rename this file to anything you want. For example, my sbase underscore lcm.xml. So let's talk about how we can automate an example. So what I do is I use Notepad and I'll create a new batch file with an extension .bat. So I would call this a sbase artifacts.bat. In that text file, you see in the italics below my path. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna call that utility.bat. That's the batch file to run. And then I'm calling my XML file, which has my artifacts that I selected to export. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, after you launch the utility.bat and you do the export the first time, it is gonna prompt you for your user ID and password. So this user should have full admin rights to the application and the artifacts that you are gonna export. This password and the user ID will be embedded in the file. And yes, the password does get encrypted. So now anytime you wanna launch that batch file, it's gonna export the same artifacts that you had just done manually. So for example, in my SBase export batch file, in Notepad, my first line is I have my MKDIR. Basically, this is just part of the command where I'm gonna make a directory and I'm creating a dated folder. Then in my second line, as you see, I'm calling the utility.bat and pointing to my XML file. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna create a dated folder, for example, October 21st, 2020, and then take an export based on the artifacts I selected in my XML file. Next slide, please. So here's an example of the XML file in terms of the components that you selected. You know, so for example, one, I'm doing all my SBase applications, but as you see where the arrow is, that's the name of one of the SBase applications. And if you look down below, these are the parameters or artifacts I'm choosing, such as my configuration, my databases, substitution variable, aliases, Excel file, etc. And as you see in the top, the uh, third line where it has the credentials, password, and the user, as I mentioned, the password is encrypted. So the password will not be visible. Okay, next slide, please. Then after the export is done, I like to include in my batch file to basically move the artifacts to that dated folder. So I use these very simple commands with the move and it has the path to where the folder is and I'm moving it to my dated folder. Then again, if you want, you could also copy it to a backup server using the xcopy command. Why do I mention using it to a backup server? There are some times you can copy it to, you know, keep it on the S-based server. But one of the things that I like to do, and I know a lot of clients now are going to Office 365 and they have OneDrive. You can actually map it to OneDrive so you can have a second location where you can keep your LCM exports in the event you need them. And then if you want, after you copy it to your location, you can always the RMDIR. Again, that's just another DOS command to remove the directory from the existing location. Okay, next slide, please. So then after the export is done and everything moved, here's an example. So if I go into Windows Explorer, you'll see I have my backup drive, my LCM S-Base folder, and I have the date you know, 2029-30, September 30th, and you can see my application. And as we drill down, these are all the artifacts that I exported in the event I needed, such as my couch scripts, rules, security, my test outline. So again, if anything ever goes wrong, accidentally mess something up while you're modifying the outline, you can always just go to your files here, restore it very quickly. Okay. Another item is Hyperion log maintenance. I like to automate that also to run the script to delete the older logs. Anybody who's used Hyperion or administrated it knows that the logs tend to grow quite large and can slow things down. 
I know, for example, in at period 11124, the financial reporting zero logs, if you're using reporting, those logs tend to grow quite large and can slow things down and even kind of hinder reports from running. So what you can do is, again, you can create a batch file to run it with NT scheduler to set your parameters when you want to delete these logs and run them. So the script for that would be the same thing. Open up a text editor such as Notepad, and in there, just put for the files, your slash P and your path to where you have those logs. You know, so for example, I want to delete the S base underscore ODL star where the star is a wild card. So any S base underscore ODL one, two, three, four, that LOG, and then that dash D and dash 15 tells me how many days. So what this file will do, it's going to look for S base ODL logs greater than 15 days and deletes them. And you can do this for financial reporting logs, HFM logs, any specific logs that you need to delete. One note, some log deletions may require some of the services to be stopped. I know for certain SBASE or HFM logs, in order to delete all of them, you do have to stop some services. Okay, next slide. Okay. The start and stop services. This is a batch file that's probably used by most of the Hyperion clients. Anybody who's ever done any infrastructure work probably has written these for the clients. And this is a script to start and stop each of the Hyperion services. You can also use this with NT scheduler to set a date and time if you want to stop and then start services. Also, there's commands in here I put to kill the open processes. If you're using some of the earlier versions, say of HFM, when you would stop services, it would not kill some of those open processes such as the HSV data source, the HSX server, or the CAS security. So what you can do in your script as you're stopping the services, you can also kill any of those open tasks. So here's an example here where I basically have the SC command to stop and I put the name of the server, then the stop command, and then the name of the service. If you'd like to find the name of the service, what you can do is you can go on to the server where each of those services are, go into services, right click, do properties, and you'll see the name. That's what you would put in the script. And then below that, where I have the tasks kill, those are how you can kill any of those open tasks for, as I mentioned, you know, with HFM. So for example, if you wanted to do a weekly recycle, you can create a batch file to stop all the services, kill the open tasks, put that into NT scheduler, say at eight o'clock, stop everything. Then again, when that's done at 8.30, put the stop. So as I show below, to start the services, you use the same script above as the stop, but you'll replace that with the start. And one other thing I wanna note where you see the timeout there, that's just basically a, a pause. So if you're gonna start up foundation, you may wanna pause 30 seconds, give it time to load into memory, then start up, say, reporting and analysis, HFM, SBH, your other product services. Okay. I want to talk about creating the dated folders and moving files. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a big believer in creating the dated folders. That way you have a restore point in time. You can either incorporate that into your existing ones or you can just create a separate batch file to you know, create your dated folders. And then you can also have it where you're going to move some of the files. For example, outlines. So what I like to do is, you know, especially for SBase, if you're constantly making changes to your calc scripts or your outlines, create a dated folder and you can just go into where the application folders are and you just copy the existing OTL file and your CSC, which are your calc script files, and you just make a copy and put them in that dated folder. So as my example here, the MKDIR, you're just basically making a directory in this location and created a dated folder. Then you'll go to the location of say, for example, your s -base applications outline. Here it's testrpt.otl. And you're gonna copy it from this location or the app location over to your backup location with that specific date. Okay, next slide please. Okay. Then X copy the copy and backup. I like to use Xcopy, which has some of those additional switches to specify the source and destination. And this also removes the read-only attribute on those files. 
So as I show below here, if I want to copy over for backup reasons from SBase, my CAP script, my rules file, and my report, I just do an X copy, point it to the location that's specific at, and the start.csc, which is my wildcard. So basically all files with the that CSC suffix, rules, and reports, and I copy it to my backup location. In the bottom, that SY basically just tells me, yes, copy any subdirectories and yes, to replace existing files if you want. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. As I mentioned, I like to also send email alerts when those tasks are completed. So anybody who is still on Windows 2008 and used NT Scheduler, you had the option to send emails. Beginning with Windows Server 2012, there is no email task via NT Scheduler. So after we run some batch files, say for example, to back up or copy your outlines or your level zero exports, like to get a notification that the task is done. So you can use a PowerShell script to email after the task is completed. Again, another example would be if you wanna do a reboot or maintenance window, you can send out an email at a specific date and time letting all the users know that a reboot is occurring. So in order to create this, again, open up, say, Notepad. You'd want to save the file as a .ps1 for PowerShell. Then you can browse out the task scheduler and you know, add that to run. So below is the code. What you would do is very simple. You, what I chose here in yellow, those are the attributes that you'd have to change. So you'd have to put your mail server, you know, who it's from, what the subject is, who you're sending it to, and just the body of the message, such as, you know, a reboot will occur at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, I was gonna run through some examples, but since, you know, we were having trouble sharing, I figured we would just go to, you know, any questions that you may have, you know, which actually better, I'd rather try to answer everyone's questions. Okay, anybody have any questions? It doesn't look like there's any questions in the Q&A box. If you do have any questions for Michael, um, just type them in the Q&A box and we will go from there. Well, I guess you were we had a big crew on uh, on the presentation and nobody has any questions. So okay. very nice job. Again, we apologize for the technical difficulties, but if you do have any questions, um, type it in the Q&A box right now. Oh, and also on the last slide, you know, it does have our email addresses. If you know any questions after, feel free to drop myself or fill a note. So we actually just got a question in. Have you tried in Linux? No, because I'll be honest, I am not that familiar with Linux and doing some of these same batch scripts on Linux. These are all kind of, you know, old DOS commands. Okay, great. All right, any other questions? All right, well, here is both Mike and William's contact information. So if you do have any questions following the presentation, this is how you would get a hold of them.